We're here today because we are opposed to the extension of the Araring coal fired power station beyond its scheduled closure date of 2025. We're concerned about the environmental, community, climate and health impacts of an extension to polluting coal fired power stations. We want to see workers supported to transition into new industries, industries of the future that we want our government to continue to invest money in as opposed to the extension of harmful coal fired power stations. But we're in favour of a fast and fair transition to renewable energy uh, for our generation and the future generations, our beautiful lake um, and of course the climate. Renewables now! Hi, my name's Kerry and I live in Newcastle in New South Wales. Uh, I'm really concerned and disappointed that there's a suggestion that a uh, power station closure may be delayed by an unspecified period. I think there was a reasonable expectation that they were going to meet the 2025 commitment and that this Labor government was elected with that commitment in mind. And uh, that sets back the whole uh, energy transition, in my opinion. Power station workers need certainty, the community needs concern certainty, investors need certainty and new technologies in new industries need certainty. This is not going to help any of that and we are in a climate crisis and we need uh, the uh, state government to step up and be true to its commitments. My name's is Esha, I'm from Akita Vale and I go to Morris at High School. I am concerned about the potential delaying of the closure of a roaring power station for the impacts on the environment. Um, we don't want more pollution than has to be and the earlier it closes the better. My name's Jess, I'm from Newcastle. I have two little boys um, and they are going to feel the brunt of the climate crisis. So I know that any step we take right now towards extending fossil fuel projects is a massive step towards worse fires and floods and extinction of our flora and fauna and extinction of ourselves. So it's a big no from me. Um, and I, I don't make much money. I um, can't afford to buy solar panels. Um, but I want to be part of the renewable transition. So I think any tax money that I pay, I would like it to go towards the renewable transition and rollout of um, solar panels on all, everyone's houses. Uh, my name is Lynn. I'm from Mulbring in the middle of the Hunter Valley. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Knitting Nanas Hunter Loop. Now I feel is really not the time to falter when you see what's happening around the world. Uh, I understand that, close, that keeping the Araring power station going is going to cost the New South Wales taxpayers between two and four hundred million dollars a year. I would much rather see that money spent towards ensuring our energy security with the technologies of the future and securing uh, a pathway for the workers into a, uh, a new jobs of the future. My name's Amy Beth and this is Patterson. We're here today because we oppose any potential extending of the Araring power station. We have a goal to get to net zero um, and that is so important not just for us and for our kids and our future but for the wildlife and the Pacific and everyone in the world who is impacted by climate change. Fossil fuels are the biggest threat to our climate and when there is a, an issue I suppose with closing these power plants. We need to think innovatively and continue to step forward rather than backpedaling. That's not going to get us anywhere and it's going to cost us more in the future. My name's Elizabeth and I'm totally against the extension of the Araring coal plant. Um, with the, in view of what's happening in the world at the moment with climate change, it's very foolhardy to subsidise even more fossil fuels. Any um, taxpayers' money that's being spent should be spent on renewables. We're from the commun Mandalong Community Association and we've come along to support this group here because we believe that the reason why we've come up here is to enjoy nature and the, and the environment and to have coal stations continue is completely against what we believe. We would like to have as many um, renewables as possible and as quickly as possible. So we would support anybody who is working towards that 
and particularly this group because they are so sure of and so uh, keen to make sure that the workers are also in mind when making the change. And I think that uh, also I'm from this area here and what I would love to see would be an ease of transition with the government supporting people being retrained, no one losing jobs, but the environment being considered and no more coal production. <laughs> All right, okay, so my name's Kim Grierson and I'm currently a member of the Community Consultative Committee for Araring Power Station. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to join that committee was I was very concerned that their ash dam is so full and they got an extension from the government to continue operating in the last few years. And I wanted to know what was happening with that coal ash. Is it being recycled or is it just being added to this ever increasing dam? And I am concerned that the dam is full and if a Raring power station gets or is forced to go ahead to keep operating, where is the coal ash going to go? It's not good enough just to say dump it, dump it, dump it, put more strain on the dam and to have more pollution leaching into Lake Macquarie. Enough is enough. If it is going to go ahead, I want to see the Minns government cough up some money to actually investigate the reuse of that coal ash. There's 100 million tonnes of it. We want it, we want it reused, not just left there for generations to pollute. But really, what I want to see too is not that the power station gets extended, that, that we turn and really ramp up our re renewables and we also look at energy efficiency because there's probably a stack of ways that we could save our energy or use it better. Well, my primary concern has been constant for about 30 years and that is protecting the environment for a livable future. Climate change has made this an imperative. Our energy requirements can be met without fossil fuels and New South Wales can keep the lights on without a rowing power station. When you meet a problem, it is not necessary to jump over the first and most obvious hurdle. A thoughtful plan can be found, can find alternate paths to get around that hurdle. New South Wales can keep the lights on, South Australia did. In every, in a very short time, sufficient battery storage was in place. It seems crazy to invest more in the energy systems that are the problem instead of the solution. Don't let the immediate obscure the big picture. Ken Henry's call for the primacy of addressing climate change in all policy should be your policy. David Pocock calls for a duty of care. We call for the closure of Erara. I'm Ingrid Schroner. I'm from Tirolba. Uh, um, I'm the research coordinator of the Coal Ash Community Alliance. We've just heard that the Minsk government is considering putting public money into getting Eraring operating for longer than makes commercial sense. We totally oppose that. Public money should go into creating the jobs that can be created from an industry that uses the coal ash as the resource it is. We first need an analysis of what is in each of the sections of each of the ash dams. This analysis will be of public benefit, so it needs to be done with public money. Once that is done, business can come together and develop a collaboration to use all the different elements that are in there. Eraring does have a problem. They have an approval for an extension of the existing dam, but it costs them a lot of money. Now, we do not want, as the local people around here, public money to go into the extension of the ash dam, because remember, every time a coal-fired power station operates, it produces coal ash. In other countries, that ash is used as it is being produced. In Australia, it's just too cheap to dump it. But now Eraring has run out of space to dump the ash. How about having a solar panel and battery scheme? So there are a lot of alternatives that any consultant who wants to advise the government, who is not beholden to the coal industry, could actually outline, and a lot of reports have happened, they are there, ready to be used. Thank you very much. Instead of all the money going to Origin to keep it open, I'd rather see all that money go to local solar community hubs. 
um, and a lot of it put towards getting rid of the coal ash that's already in the coal ash dams. That is leaching into our waterways and polluting our air. Um, please make those good decisions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Will. I live in North Arm Cove. I'm concerned about the, um, should I say, leaked um, details that there will be an estimated 200 to 400 million per annum spent to keep a roaring open past 2025. I think this is a misuse of public money. Uh, we should go in confidence in believing that renewables are our future. You know, there's batteries that we could be built, we could put uh, solar on the homes all throughout the Hunter. Just for the immediate, put a battery in, put some solar, and let's get on with the transition. I'm really concerned about the possibility of hundreds of millions of dollars going into propping up coal-fired power stations. In this instance, I'm thinking of that potential in terms of Irari. I'd rather see that money invested in renewable energy and that those wonderful workers who work at the power stations could get jobs in the renewable energy sector. To do so, we also need an investment in training so they can transition into those new jobs. I think that it would have a tremendous impact, not only on the workforce, but also on the health of communities around the power station. And needless to say, I believe it would have a tremendous impact on the health of the lake. We know that seagrasses have been detrimentally impacted by the thermal uh, impacts from the outlets, the water outlets. And I am concerned also about the coal ash dams which leach heavy metals into the lake and also about the environmental impact from the emissions from the stacks. There is so much that the community can gain from a transition to renewable energy and it's unfortunate that the wonderful workers and the communities around here have had to pay a high price for the reliance on fossil fuels and it's time for us change. It's time for Minns, the Premier, to step up and be courageous and help us all shift to a re renewable energy. Thank you. This is a statement from a resident of the Central Coast, Gary Blaschke. It is asked us to read out on his behalf today. It says, my name is Gary Blaschke, OAM, a resident of Lake Monmora, a long-term campaigner on health and environmental impacts from power stations and ash dams. I was diagnosed with three cancers some three years ago. Being a non-drinker or a smoker and a surfer for over five decades, I had no symptoms and my family and I were devastated with the news. I cannot be here today as I am in the cancer clinic having my 48th immunotherapy treatment for my unexplained cancers. As a member of the Araring Community Consultative Committee, I believe firstly we haven't been told the truth about the impacts on our lives by consecutive governments or the industry itself. The New South Wales Government's coal ash inquiry in 2021 was damning of New South Wales Health and the New South Wales EPA. Their comment was that their findings demonstrated a complete disregard by the government towards the health of citizens. The committee's 16 recommendations, especially that of number six on health, have not been completed to date, even though the deadline was the 31st of December 2022. I am appalled that the New South Wales Government would or could contemplate financial support for any expansion to the lifespan of a roaring power station, owned by overseas investors to the ongoing detriment of our local community's health and the environmental impacts, especially when the New South Wales Treasurer, the Hon Daniel Mookie, was chairperson of this coal ash inquiry. Keep up the anger and the fight, says Gary. Being able to say to our children, we tried, we not only tried, but we did. We not only did, but we went into thinking about the future and not just about ourselves. We went into the future thinking not just about our own greed, but what the future is going to look like. And we need to see it now because otherwise there is no future. We can do better, we have to, and there's no excuses.